So this video is going to cover two dot points. Firstly, identify the role of the kidney in the excretory system of fish and mammals and perform a first-hand investigation of the structure of a mammalian kidney by dissection, use of a model of visual resource and identify the regions involved in the excretion of waste products. So we're going to start with the theory dot point, so identifying the role of the kidney. So the kidney is the main organ involved in osmoregulation, which is the regulation of water and salt concentration, and the excretion of wastes in mammals. The kidney filters the blood of meta uh, sorry, filters the blood of metabolic waste such as urea and maintains a stable concentration of water in the bloodstream. The kidneys are part of the urinary system, and in mammals, the two kidneys are found close to the back wall of the abdominal cavity on either side of the vertebral column. So as we can see here, there's a number of different structures that we need to become familiar with with the kidneys. So this is just a little bit of an introduction, and then we're going to have a look at each one in a little bit more detail as we move through. So we have the renal artery. So the job of the renal artery is to bring waste-filled blood to the kidneys. It then enters the outer region of the kidney, which is the cortex, and can, the cortex contains about a million blood-filtering nephrons, which we'll have a look in the next slide, and that's probably the thing that we're going to be focusing on the most during our time looking at the kidneys. Then we have the medulla or the medulla, which is the inner region of the kidney and that contains about eight to 12 of the renal pyramids. So we can see those triangle shaped structures, they're the different renal pyramids. We then have the calluses, which channel the urine from the pyramids to the renal pelvis. The job of the renal pelvis is to collect the urine from the nephrons. We then have the ureter, which collects the filtrate and urine from the renal pelvis and carries it to the bladder for storage until it's uh, eliminated. And lastly, the renal vein, which then takes the filtered blood, which has no longer got any of these nitrogenous wastes, from the kidneys back to the rest of the body. So the functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. The nephron begins in the outer cortex at the Bowman's capsule. This is a cup that surrounds a clump of capillaries which are known as the glomerulus. So as we can see, this red structure in this little cup shape is the glomerulus and it's uh, really wound tight and the blood enters the glomerulus under really high pressure. The high pressure blood is then filtered uh, and then the glomerular filtrate enters the Bowman's capsule so from the capsule, the nephron loops down and back in the, into the medulla. Uh, so it leaves the Bowman's capsule into the proximal convoluted tubule, which is still contained within the cortex. Then we go down into the descending loop of Henle, back up into the ascending loop of Henle, which is located in the medulla, back up into the cortex through the distal convoluted tubule and then into the collecting duct, which then carries the uh, urine, the nitrogenous waste, anything that we need to get rid of, down to the ureta, which then ca carries uh, the urine to the bladder. So the role of the kidney in fish and mammals is dependent really on their uh, environment. So in mammals, the kidney is responsible for regulating the internal salt and water concentration of the body, which is also known as osmoregulation, as well as excreting nitrogenous wastes. So in particular, mammals need to get rid of urea, as we said in the last video. In fish, the main role is osmoregulation as well, so regulating salt and water concentrations, the removal of nitrogenous wastes, in this case being ammonia, and to adjust the levels of mineral ions within the body to maintain a balance of internal fluid within the cells. As well as the kidneys, the fish are also able to excrete nitrogenous waste across their gills. So depending on whether they're in freshwater or saltwater, how much of these nitrogenous waste they need to get rid of, fish have that secondary organ that they can use to excrete these nitrogenous wastes. So the role of kidneys in the fish is dependent, a lot more dependent on their environment than in mammals. So we already touched on the idea of looking at the difference between marine or saltwater fish and freshwater fish. So here we're going to look at them a little bit more detail. So in marine or fresh, uh, sorry, saltwater fish, the kidneys excrete small amounts of isotonic solution, which is the same concentration of salt as the surrounding water. So iso means same, hyper means more, hypo means less. So isotonic, meaning that they have the same concentration of salt as the surrounding water in their urine. This helps the fish to conserve water 
and excrete excess salt, salt that they gain from their environment. So obviously being in a salty environment, the salt is able to enter the fish a lot more easy than uh, in other environments. So because they've got this excess salt entering, they need to get rid of those excess salts. In freshwater fish, the kidneys work continuously to excrete large amounts of dilute, so high water concentration, low salt concentration urine. So this helps to remove the excess water gained from their hypotonic environment. So sorry, that last bit's blocked out by the images. It wasn't like that before. Okay, so um, again, freshwater fish, lots of water in their environment. Water is able to move into the fish simply by the process of osmosis. So they've got large amounts of water that they need to get rid of. So this table summarizes uh, a few different features of uh, the excretory system in mammals, saltwater fish and freshwater fish. So the kidney in mammals is an excretory organ that filters the blood and removes nitrogenous wastes. They have many nephrons, which we'll be looking at uh, in future lessons. Filtration is under high pressure. So the blood enters the glomerulus under really high pressure, which then forces the process of ultrafiltration. And the amount of urine and concentration depends on water intake and activity, which we mentioned in the last video. So if somebody is dehydrated, the amount of urine will be less because the body ensures that they're keeping as much water as possible. In saltwater fish, the kidneys are an excretory organ, again, which filters blood and removes nitrogenous waste. They have a simple structure with few smaller glomeruli. Uh, Blood enters the kidneys under a low rate, so low blood pressure, so a low filtration rate takes place. And saltwater fish produce a small quantity of concentrated urine. So again, that water is being kept by the fish in order to maintain water balance within the cells and we get rid of a lot of the ammonia. In freshwater fish, again, so for all three, the kidneys are an excretory organ which filters blood and removes nitrogenous waste. They have a simple structure, but this time we have many large glomeruli. So filtration occurs much higher in freshwater fish than saltwater fish because we have that high volume of water that we need to get rid of. And freshwater fish, freshwater fish, so I try saying that a few times quickly, produce large amounts of dilute urine, okay? Again, lots of water coming in, so the water needs to be gone. Now we're just going to quickly have a look through what we need to do to set up for the first 10 investigation. So a few safety precautions, obviously we'll be using scalpels. So you need to carry the scalpel with the blade facing downwards to avoid cutting yourself or people while moving, while moving around the lab. Wear gloves and or wash hands thoroughly after hand, handling the kidney. It's obviously a biological substance, so we need to avoid contamination and ensure that all biological waste is disposed of appropriately to avoid contamination. So we won't be putting anything in the general classroom bin. It will be disposed of appropriately. So the method you'll be given a kidney that will hopefully have a few vessels attached to it. So you'll want to lay it flat on the table, as you can see in the first image, and you want to just be able to identify some of these external structures. Then you want to create a transverse cut, so a cross section through the kidney, and lay it flat on the table so that you're able to identify the different uh, areas that we've already looked at, as well as the different structures that we need to be able to identify and know the function of for the syllabus. Our results will be drawing some uh, internal and external diagrams of the kidney and uh, being able to identify the different places. And we will be specifically looking at drawing a nephron as well, even though we won't be able to specifically see a nephron as they are microscopic, but we will be drawing one. So we start getting uh, that into our head of the structure and the function of the different parts of the nephron. And that brings us to the end of this video. And we'll be looking more at the kidney in much more detail in the upcoming videos. Thank you.